Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. And the big story we are looking at this morning, it's on the front page of the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian. The story goes cover up. Committee's report on Daryl Smith revealed deliberate attempt to hide sexual harassment claims and sought to, to minimize the potential damages. Well, Kirk Waith has been very adamant that this issue needs to be uh, explained and ventilated in the public domain. Kirk Waith has been not just relentless, but he's refused to give up on this, saying that this is a national issue and the Prime Minister cannot ignore it. Now, a couple months ago, the Prime Minister, in an interview with I-95 FM, made the he said uh, he was asked about why he had not yet made the report into the matter public, despite calls for him to do so. Uh, including fixing TNT, who has been on this issue. In the response, the Prime Minister said he could not publicly reveal the contents of the report because it came to the conclusion negatively about Mr. Smith without talking to him. Rowley said Smith's lawyers have complained of the process involved and threatened to take action if the report were made public. However, he said the action had been taken against the Minister, although he did not indicate what the exact nature of the action was. Joining us on the line at this time, we're fixing TNT. Uh, Kirk Waith, who filed the Freedom of Information Act requesting the details of the report. Um, however, that report was since denied. Kirk, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Eva, and good morning to your listeners across Trinidad and Tobago and the world. Now, the big story today on the front page of the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian, we are inviting our viewers to get involved and to vote on this. But your thoughts on this latest development, a leaked memo written by the Permanent Secretary speaking about a cover-up in the Daryl Smith matter. Your thoughts on it? Well, first of all, let me say that the fourth estate is alive and well. And while imperfect, the media is working. Um, Lasana Library, I think, was the first to bring this matter to the to, to, to the national forefront uh, back in 20, <clears throat> some time ago, I think, last year. With respect to what is reported this morning in uh, in two major newspapers, uh, there are a few things that we think need to be done with immediate effect. If, according to one article, the Quamina that is named in the Smith report, if that Kwamina is Michael Kwamina, Prime Minister Rowley's personal attorney, then he, Mr. Kwamina, must be immediately removed from his position as the chairman of the Trinidad Petroleum Holdings Company Limited. Uh, the, the allegations, as reported, are damning. Uh, they speak to a cover-up. Uh, there is a matter at Petrotrin, uh, involving, in inverted commas, fake oil mm. that is currently engaging the police, and I'm not, not sure if it's yet before the court. But, as I said, if, if the Kwamina in this report is the same as Dr. Rowley's attorney, Mr. Kwamina must, be, must immediately be removed as chairman of the Trinidad, and Tobago, uh, Trinidad Pet Petroleum Holdings Company Limited. It may very well be time, based on, 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 on what is reported today, it may very well be time for the police to launch an investigation into this whole Daryl Smith, Smith report fiasco. Um, thirdly, based again on, on, on what is coming out, effective implementation of sexual harassment legislation must be immediately placed among the top priorities of the government. That, that has to be done immediately. Um, Sexual harassment for too long in Trinidad and Tobago has been has been just given lip service. And uh, when you have a prime minister that describes women as golf courses, uh, describes a woman as a golf course that needs to be groomed, we're far behind and in some trouble. What is this? Do you expect? You know, we we're a country, uh, Kirk of of cover-ups and we're a country that we don't see these actions to the end. Do you think that there's any hope that we will take this matter seriously? Um, and what is the, the, ne the next step in this? Well, as I said, I think, uh, well, to answer the first part of your question, with respect to, to the issue of cover-up, uh, yes, our successive administrations have become very good at that. We cover up in different ways. We cover up with commissions of inquiry that, uh, that they were where the reports aren't released. Um, this administration, instead of uh, commissions of inquiry, uh, they, they've, they've, they've found a shortcut in, for example, with the Seabridge issue, that you have the Mute report, uh, somebody who, has, who had no business 
leading an investigation, appointed to lead an investigation into the Seabridge fiasco. Um, we still maintain that that is a matter, particularly as it relates to Bridgman's, that requires a criminal investigation conducted by the police, one that employs the requisite forensic expertise to follow the proverbial money. Bridgman's uh, Services Group is a company for which no physical office space could have been found. It is a company which uh, at the time did not have 30 seconds of audited financials. Yes, yet it was uh, awarded a, a multi-million dollar contract uh, to transport citizens of Trinidad and Tobago between, uh, across seas between islands. Um, you have the, 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 the Thomas report on the Dennis, Dennis Moses matter. That has never been, um, been, been released. Uh, the Board of Inquiry report that was produced upon conclusion of the Army's investigation into the al Rawi family slash Stuart Young visit to Camp Kamuto where the Attorney General's children were photographed being in possession of, of uh, high-powered weapons, that report is nowhere to be found. The lead investigator in that matter, who is now on pre-retirement leave, Superintendent McAlpin, as far as we understand, requested a copy of that report a couple of years ago. Up to last Monday, I, we, we've been asking, we've written to the Commissioner, and we've been asking the Commissioner to get that report. Up to Monday, that report has not been made available to the police. It disappeared. The, the last person to, uh, to, to, to be known to have been in possession of it was Rodney Smart, who is now head of the ODPM. His successor, former, he's the former chief of defense staff, his successor, Aidan Pritchard, the report was never a part of his handover. I say that as fact because I spoke with Hayden Pritchard on it. Mm -hmm. The current chief of defense staff has never seen the report. Uh, we go to the Camille Robinson Regis matter, the $143,800 uh, cash transaction. The common denominator in many of these issues is the Attorney General, Faris Alwari. Now, you're looking at this and you say that it's time for the police to open an investigation and also you're saying in a number of these issues you are calling on the Attorney General to either declare his hand or to, to act on this matter. What do you want to see from the Office of the Attorney General? No, I'm not calling on the Attorney General to declare anything. I'm calling on the police to launch an investigation into the aforementioned matters. Now, tell me a little bit I about the... No expect I have no expectation, none, of the Attorney General. Tell me a little bit about the FOIA request because you... Just for the, the background, the benefit of our viewers, you got involved in this because you felt as though not enough was being said about it. What was it specifically about this issue that you felt you needed to go and take it one step further and file the FOIA? And what came out of the FOIA request? Well, the underlying issue here is sexual harassment, which is not taken seriously in Trinidad and Tobago and continues to be a major problem. People are scarred, scarred indefinitely, sometimes for life. NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, internationally are known to be used as a tool to suppress sexual harassment victims. This is no different. Harvey Weinstein used to do it. We're doing it here. And this is not the only case where this has happened. I know of at least one more case where a young woman who chose to resign after making complaints of sexual harassment did not receive her last month's pay, her, her last paycheck and went and was told to come and collect it and when she went was told she can get it if she signs an NDA. This is no different from this matter as Lasano Liburd reported uh, last year that the young woman involved only knew of the NDA when she went to collect the check. Now, with respect to the FOIA that we filed, we found it curious that the, among the reasons given was that the, the, the report was uh, flawed and unfair because persons, it didn't say person, persons in the plural who were criticized were not being given, were not given the opportunity to be heard. And we asked publicly yesterday of the Attorney General, who were those persons? Well, 
the report today, the reports in the, in the newspapers today, have started naming some of those persons. And as we said, if among those persons is, if the Kwamina referred to is Michael Kwamina, he must be immediately removed as the chairman of Trinidad Petroleum Holdings Limited. The Attorney General, there must also be a determination to know what the Attorney General and Minister Stuart Young, who is a minister in the office of the Attorney General, what they knew and when. Who decided that this matter should be, instead of being dealt with as a sexual harassment allegation, who decided that this matter should be treated as unfair dismissal, a labor dispute? Those were what Faris Alwari and Stuart Young said after, uh, in defending the NDA and after the, um, the, the settlement mm -hmm. last year. They, they said, this was a minor, uh, just, just a labor dispute. Camille Robinson Regis, who's yet to account for her $143,800 cash, uh, where that money came from, in this matter said, accused the media of making a story out of a non story and accused the media of having an agenda. The cover ups must stop. Politicians need to understand that in this age of information technology and social media, you cannot hide. And, and let me say this as well. There are many good people in the public service, just like in the United States now, where you're seeing against the wishes of the, the Trump administration and the White House, so many public servants are coming forward to tell the truth. We have many like that in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, I read with interest this part of the, the letter and the report. It is in our view that all relevant persons concerned in foregoing the settlement of Maureen's trade dispute, which uh, it's been described as a trade dispute, hid behind the above pattern, yet benign circumstances of Maureen's termination as a means of disguising the true nature of the dispute. The non-disclosure issue that everyone seems to be hiding behind uh, is it, is it, you know, looking at it, is it just all a bunch? Is it, is it just simply a way for the public to not be aware, or is it a way to simply yet again cast aside issues of sexual harassment and issues of women making claims against men in powerful positions? Well, I think it's all of the above. But unlike uh, other men who have used non-disclosures, uh, other situations that we know of, this settlement was done with taxpayers' money. And the public must care about that. And the police must also, and uh, those that is among the reasons that the police must launch an investigation into this matter. This was public funds. Who decided, who decided, or who, uh, who were the persons or the team that decided that, you know, this woman is accusing the minister of sexual harassment. Um, She's terminated, let's just make it a labor dispute. Then who decided to settle it? Who decided on the amount? Who decided, you know what, let's make her sign an NDA? Were you surprised who that the- Who drafted the NDA? Sorry, go ahead, Hima. I just wanted to ask, in terms of your FOIE, were you surprised at that the information, because you are right, the basis of this is a public office. It's public money that was used to settle this claim, a sexual harassment claim that has been dis disguised as a trade dispute. Were you surprised that the FOI, on what basis was the FOI uh, denied? <laughs> we've not submitted a single FOI, and we've submitted quite a few, oh. where the authorities were forthcoming with information. We had to file judicial review in the, uh, in the, um, Seabridge matter with, with Bridgman's, and we successfully did that, where the, 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 the Port Authority was forced to admit, forced by the courts, to admit that Bridgman's was awarded a contract without any references being requested by the Port Authority, and therefore no references were checked, nobody was spoken to. They just give a contract to a company that had no experience, no financial history, no known office, uh, physical office, uh, or that, that, that could be found. They just gave this company this contract to transport citizens of Trinidad and Tobago overseas between islands. Um, the, 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 the matter that we have, we, we're still before the courts now with the issue of the camouflage with, with, with respect to the commissioner of police, where we asked to see the communication uh, where, where, where the commissioner may have was requested permission to use the camouflage and where the permission was then granted by the Minister of National Security. 
We've asked to see that. We were denied. So we're in the court, and we will win that as well. Um, so, no, I was not surprised, because the government is not forthcoming with information, and they're not forthcoming with information because there's a lot to hide. There's a lot that they want to hide. There's a lot, let me assure the population, they will not be allowed to hide. Now, there's another part of this letter, which uh, the two, two other instances of inappropriate conduct by the former minister, which we are prepared to treat as consensual, were also reported to P.S. Mendes, and that was also found. So is it simply, uh, was, it, was, it, was, it, was it a regular sort of occurrence? Was it, was it a pattern that they discovered? <laughs> that would be, um, I, I, I wouldn't be able to comment on that. What I found interesting in the report as well, though, was that there was no, uh, there were no avenues once the complaint was made in the ministry yeah. for an investi an investi a proper investigation to be conducted. We need very urgently, we're in dire need of sexual harassment legislation. Sexual harassment is abuse. Sexual harassment scars people for life. I know women who alleged to have been sexually harassed by the former chairman of Angus, Tura Rolf Balgobin. And to this day, when I speak with them, they shake. And they're nervous, and they're, 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 there's anxiety. Sexual harassment has to be taken seriously. Effective implementation has to be put in place, and this must stop. If the Prime Minister does not address this, or the government does not address this at the post-Cabinet news briefing today, because these are damning allegations, uh, serious allegations, and $150,000 of taxpayers' dollars was used uh, to settle a claim that has been described as a trade dispute that, in essence, I can only say it's a sexual harassment claim. Um, if they do not address that in a post-Cabinet news briefing today, what do you think is going to be the eventual outcome? We're going to, as, as we did in, in, in previous matters, we're going to insist on a police investigation. And we're going to, and, 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 and we have, I am optimistic that the commissioner would treat this, this with the urgency that, 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 that is warranted. Um, that, that, that would be our next step. By the, by, by the time of the post-cabinet meeting today, we expect that the prime minister would have announced the removal of Michael Kwamina, his personal attorney. Well, that is if he is a Mr. Kwamina that's referred to. We don't know yet if sure, it is sure. or isn't. Well, 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 let me, let, let, so let me rephrase that. Yeah. We expect that if the Kwamina referred to in the Smith report is his personal attorney, Michael Kwamina, then the Prime Minister, by the, by, by, by the time of the post-Cabinet meeting, should have announced that Mr. Kwamina has been removed as the chairman of Trinidad Petroleum Holdings Limited, Company Limited. Uh, Kirk, thanks so much for taking your call this morning. And I know that you have been un you have been very active. You have been calling for the report to be made public today. Uh, the other the report has issued that there is, and I'm quoting, a concerted effort to cover up allegations of sexual harassment against the former sports minister Daryl Smith, and that's according to the findings of a three woman committee that was set up by the prime minister. The report was not made public. The report spoke to the fact that this was described as a trade dispute, not a sexual harassment allegation. It it also speaks to the fact that $150,000 of taxpayers' dollars, your money, my money, was used to settle this claim. And there's a non-disclosure agreement. It'll be interesting for you to look up what happens in the Weinstein agreement and what happens in sexual harassment cases and the use of the non-disclosure issue and why is it no longer considered a legal, a legal clause in terms of hiding the atrocities occurring in high offices in our country. Uh, the question we're asking, do you think that there was a cover-up of the Daryl Smith sexual allegations? 100% of you say yes. We're going to continue our discussions. We take a short break. When we come back, the police commissioner versus the judiciary, the Law Association, says they are going to respond to it. Well, we have one senior member of the criminal bar here this morning. Mario Merritt will be joining us in a short bit.